Hello, everyone. I'm Greg Kim. I'm uh, Chief Revenue Officer and GM of Mobile at Slick Deals, which is the largest and most trusted deal sharing site in the nation. Um, over the next 15 minutes, we don't have a lot of time, but over the next 15 minutes, I'll give you a quick story of Slick Deals and how we built the top 150 site in the nation as a social commerce case study. So, but before I start off with the show of hands, uh, how many of you, how many have you uh, heard of Slick Deals before, before this presentation? How many use Slick Deals as a consumer? Who are merchants in this room? And publishers, affiliates? Okay, got it. Cool, that's helpful. Well, the goal of this presentation is twofold. So if you're a merchant, just to help you understand why it's important to work with sites like a Slick Deals or social commerce sites like a Juan Nilo or Polyvore, et cetera. Or from a publisher perspective, just to understand how you incorporate social into your business uh, to best leverage uh, that business model and really grow and scale your business. So a lot of people have said that social is the winning business model, and I, I definitely agree with that statement. I mean, you just have to look at across the web, whether it's right here, friends network, social network is Facebook, business network, LinkedIn. Social is the winning business model pretty much in every vertical of the internet. And there's a lot listed that's not even listed here that's such as in financial services, there's folks like Lending Club that are disrupting that vertical, et cetera. Uh, this last one is uh, Reddit for news and content. How many of you are familiar with Reddit? So oftentimes when I explain slick deals, it's really hard to explain it. Uh, but when I say it's the Reddit for deals, people get it right away. Um, essentially, slick deals is the leader in the deals commerce space with about 9 million unique visitors coming to our site every month and generating hundreds of millions of visits uh, every year. Uh, we do it all through social. So we have a membership of 2 million strong uh, that post deals to our site. And people vote it up and down, similar to how they vote it up and down on Reddit. And the best deals rise to the top. As it relates to social commerce, I um, want to highlight the two impacts that we're seeing. And then we'll dive deep into slick deals. But at a macro level, social commerce, from a consumer perspective, it definitely adds a new dimension to online shopping. So crowdsourced content enables those sites and services to get a broad set of content. So Reddit's of the world with news content, slick deals with deals. When you have millions of people contributing this content, you get the best set. And then if people are voting it up and down and adding ratings and reviews, it's very quality content. So that's why Reddit generates 40 million plus unique visitors per month. And sites like slick deals are able to generate significant scale as well. And these social sites also allow consumers to find and interact with each other. So I don't know if you guys, those familiar with Slick Deals, you probably see it, but those who aren't, who aren't with each deal thread that a user posts, let's say for a 60 inch TV uh, from Walmart for $450, there's a lot of comments to that, usually 50 plus comments about how great the deal is, how bad the deal is, how great the retailer is, how bad the retailer is, and various little details. So it helps users um, see that sort of robust content and make the best informed decision. They feel confident in their purchase decisions. And that's one of the beauties of social commerce. From a merchant perspective, social commerce allows um, not only significant sales if you're working with folks like a Slick Deals who have that scale, but also drives down your supplier costs. So a lot of the merchants that we work with, they sell a lot on Slick Deals. Because of that significant scale, they can go back to their suppliers, neg negotiate lower rates, uh, get the product at lower prices, sell it on slick deals, and iterate back and forth, and able to generate not only significant sales, but significant profits in that manner. And I guess the last point I'll quickly make is that it drives incremental viral sales. So whenever things get on sites like a slick deals, um, you're not just touching that one user, you're touching the 100 people that's connected to that user. Because in the case of social, social commerce, when someone gets that 60 inch TV deal, on eBay today for $450, when it's usually 1,000 plus, they usually tell their friends and family. So you get that viral component to attract new users to your brand or shop. And just to, so we started with the high level and just wanted to dive deeper into slick deals with a little of the history. So this was a site that's founded in 1999 by a fellow named Van Track. He founded it in college. Um, he saw his friends making money from affiliate marketing. He's like, what, what's this? So he started to post some deals. Uh, there's a famous story internally where he 
got his first affiliate check and it was for 17 cents. And he was really happy about it. He told his girlfriend, now wife at the time, or girlfriend at the time, now wife. And um, she was like, whoop do you do Like, tell me when you, you know, make a dollar. Uh, but he was so excited and he kept doing it again and again. And it took him a good long seven years to really get traction. But that's the thing with communities and social. It takes, it's hard to build, but once you get that inflection point, it sort of takes off by itself. So from there, in 2004, he built the community forum based on a V Bulletin platform. If you guys ever considered adding social into your business, especially if you're a publisher, there's a platform called V Bulletin that powers community forums. And so he incorporated that to leverage the wisdom of crowds. And that's really when the site took off in 2004. And then 2010, as the company grew to significant scale, uh, high, high millions in traffic, he started to invest into people to manage the merchant relationships with the Macy's, Amazon's, Best Buy's, and all the internet retailer 500. And that was another inflection point to really build that side of the business. Because as a social commerce site, we have two customers. We have the consumers on one hand, the B2C side, and then the merchants, the advertisers on the other end, the B2B side. And so once we started to build these deeper relationships uh, with these merchants, that's when sort of the second inflection point of the company to help monetize the content, as well as getting exclusive deals from these merchants, working closely with them uh, to get the great deals. And then to expand into mobile, we did that end of 2012 with the iOS and Android mobile apps. And those apps as well incorporate some social features, but I would say not enough, but those are some of the things we're looking to incorporate and I can get into details later. Um, and this is an interesting point before I joined the company in 2012. So uh, before 2012, the company grew all through viral marketing. So I, I noticed there were some sessions today, Affiliate Summit for content marketing. So Van curated the best of the web deals on the site. And so Joe or Sally would see these deals and tell all their friends. Well, that's how the company grew virally from 1999 1999 with one visitor to now 9 million unique visitors per month with zero paid marketing. Um, so that was very incredible. But, but uh, now in 2013 and beyond, we're starting to invest in paid advertising. So whether it's SEM, uh, you know, display, emails, affiliates, et cetera, we're starting to expand our marketing channels. And a little tidbit here as it relates to social commerce as well. People tend to like social commerce sites, as we saw in that uh, earlier graphic in pretty much every vertical, social commerce sites are the leaders and people enjoy it. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with the net promoter score concept. Uh, if you haven't, you should uh, read up on it. It's a great metric for you to understand how, how well you're satisfying your customers. Um, and it's, um, it's a you know, national standard and sites like, or companies like Apple, Costco, Amazon do these types of things. And, um, we did a net promoter survey and we yielded a 70% plus score, uh, which is sort of, a, I wouldn't say unheard of, but it's rarefied air. So folks like Apple, Costco, Amazon get in the 70% plus. The average companies get like 20 to 30%. Uh, so this was uh, very interesting and exciting to see. And it sort of speaks to the power of social. So again, I would um, emphasize that if you don't have some social aspects to your site, uh, it's definitely something to consider. And then lastly, going forward, just incorporating more social personalization and local features into our site. And then we're about to also embark on TV. So that just gives you a, a feel for Slick Deals and the foundation. It'll provide some context and color in terms of the subsequent topics that I'll hit on. So in terms of how it works, I generally touched on it earlier, but um, we have millions of members that see a great deal, whether it's you know, offline, you get your Bloomies friends and family mailer and you see it, it's a great deal you want to share with the community. People will, you ask why, they just do it. They, they will post it to Slick Deals and share it with the community or you see that great deal at Amazon or eBay or Neiman Marcus or wherever it might be. People post it to the site. Uh, and the community votes it up and down and they comment on it. There's a lot of rich content. Um, and then the deal editors curate it. This is a pretty interesting piece of our model. Um, so there's a back-end algorithm that elevates the deals as they go through the system. Uh, everything enters our, our site through the hot deals forum. And then as, as it gets enough votes, it moves to trending and then a section called popular deals. Um, but from there, that's where the algorithm stops. 
And we actually have an internal team of deal editors that curate these deals, pick from popular deals, and cherry pick the best 30 or so deals onto our front page. So these are 30 of the best deals in America at that point in time. Uh, there's no other site that can do that. It's really us with the scale of uh, the community. Um, so it's a very powerful system. And in terms of the results, I mean, consumers get huge savings. I mean, if you look at our site today, you'll be like, oh, that's a great deal. I might go buy it. In some ways, it could be addictive, so be careful, be, be warned. But um, yeah, and we generate significant sales for our, for our merchant partners. So the title of this presentation was The Secrets of Slick Deals Revealed. So I'll get into four of these secrets today. Uh, first is content and value is king. So we've he all heard that, and I think it makes sense. And uh, I would reinforce that with my experience at Slick Deals. Uh, the best deal content has always won, and that's how, as we said, the, our founder, Van, uh, grew from zero in 1999 to nine million unique visitors per month today with zero paid marketing. It's all about delivering the best content for the users and building that trust that I'll touch on in subsequent slides. And then content and value will trump suboptimal product design. So I don't know if you guys have seen the site, and for those who are familiar with Slick Deal, seen the evolution since 1999, but it's not the most aesthetic site. Uh, similar to Craigslist, it was more about a utility where people can post things and consume things. Uh, but we do have plans to make it uh, much nicer and consumable, but with that being said, Content is king. Design is not as important. And then lastly, the social aspect is the competitive advantage. I mean, we have players in our space. Uh, you know, they're all great players in coupons and deals. Uh, but they don't have the community that we do, so they take feeds, et cetera. And uh, that's great, and we do that as well. But it's the community that really allows you to post the best content on the web. Uh, because for slick deals, uh, you learn, if you, if you sign up and post a deal, you learn pretty quickly, as I did when I posted my first deal, that um, you know, if it's not a great deal, people will thumb it down and flame you. And so you know you don't want to waste your time by posting a so-so deal. So it's the best deals that make it to slick deals, and then the best of the best that make it to front page. So again, a lot of, a lot of topics, a lot of sessions around content marketing at, at this uh, conference, and uh, I would say it's definitely very important. Secret number two, quality and trust is job number one. So, um, you know, in terms, I already touched on this, but one thing, the second point I'll touch on is that merchants cannot post deals. So when you think about your own site, you want to ensure that there's great quality content to build that trust with the users. We don't, we don't allow our merchants to post deals. Um, so if they do, we'll catch them and ban them from the site. Um, that way we can ensure that um, the quality of the content is great on our site. As well, the third point, Slick Deals front page commitment. We have this commitment that people, um, that we won't sell a paid placement on our front page, that everything's organic, and it's really the community that votes up the best deals to the top. And I think that's the same way that Reddit works and a lot of other social commerce sites. I got the five minute time check, so I'll quickly breeze through some of these others and hopefully leave time for Q&A. Um, oops. In terms of secret number two, or secret number three, community feedback loops. So if you're gonna incorporate social, you need feedback loops, because in the wild west of user-generated content, a lot of things can happen. Um, so you really need good feedback loops for whether it's the community providing those feedback loops or you have an internal team of moderators to moderate the behavior of the community. You know, if someone posts some unsavory stuff or makes some unsavory comments or is bullying other community members, you gotta make sure you adjust those things quickly, and you need to have these community feedback loops in place to catch them. Uh, social's not easy, but the ROI is powerful. I think a lot of us know this, whether as affiliates or even as an advertiser, you can't just simply put up a Facebook page and expect, oh great, I'm gonna get tons of engagement and uh, sales, et cetera. It really, quite, really requires a lot of work, and it's no different on Slick Deals and other social commerce sites where you need to work closely together to make sure that um, you can really sort of, feed, sort of um, take advantage of that community. So at Slick Deals, we really understand our community very well. So with our advertisers, we help, help them craft the deals uh, such that um, you know, it provides the greatest chance of success. And that's why we drive for some of our larger advertisers, we drive 100 million sales per year for them. Uh, so that's quite a lot. 
and I guess the note for publishers, it's you know, easy, easy to launch a social aspect to your site, but it's extremely difficult to scale. So in terms of, you, know, you might ask, why are we sharing our secrets? It's really hard to build a big community, so we're not as concerned. But um, yeah, I mean, it's very difficult to build. And you know, Van, for our founder, Van, it took him 12 years to really build it to scale. So I want, also wanted to get into the results of social commerce, the power of it. So this is some examples from Slick Deals in terms of if you're an advertiser in retail, this gives you a flavor of the power of social commerce sites like a Slick Deals. So top left corner, Canon cameras, 420,000 of sales, sold 200 of them in five days. Burberry purses, sold 800 of them in three hours at $500 a pop. Uh, it goes on and on and on. And these, I'll mention, these aren't even during like Black Friday or Cyber Monday. This is any old day at Slick Deals. We're able to sell a lot because of the size of the community, et cetera. And then this is the last slide in terms of result number two, David versus Goliath. So how many of you, how many of you have heard of You Tell Me Not? So great company, large public company, went public last year, billion plus in market cap, hundreds of millions of sales. And um, their claim to fame is the leading online coupon site in the world, which is true. Ours is the leading product specific deal site and community. And uh, in terms of employees, they're orders of magnitude larger. We're, one country, we're operating one country, one brand. They operate in six countries, eight brands. Their top, our top marketing source is direct navigation because people just come to slick deals. 80% of our visits actually are people who come back every day. Um, and they get mainly from SEO. Very high engagement for slick deals. Uh, less so for retail me not. And then this last point really gets at the power of social. So with this small team, small company, we're able to generate similar level of visits as Retail Me Not, who operates in six countries, eight brands, with 444 people. It's that community that's sort of the sling. Um, so that's the way you can really build scale. So as an advertiser, um, definitely consider working with social commerce sites. And if you already are, try to figure out how to even make, take it a step further because again, it is the winning business model. And if you're a publisher, you should incorporate social, figure out how to incorporate social uh, into your business because the trends going forward are social and mobile. And if you don't have those two things, then you're probably gonna be um, not as competitive as you should be. So with that being said, I guess I'll leave it open for Q&A. Not today, but we're in the process of building out a syndication platform so we can syndicate our best of web content to other folks and help them monetize it. Um, right. We do have concerns about it. That's a good point, and we do have some internal debate about it. Um, so if we do syndicate it out, we wouldn't do it broadly. We'd be very selective in, in how we do it. Um, but that's a good point. Any other questions? I know this wasn't a lot of time. It was pretty high level. Yes? Well, I think it's really those two, two trends that are going to impact the marketplace the most and really dictate who will be the winners and losers in every industry, not just deals or coupons. Um, so with the mobile piece, I think that's probably even more important in some sense because I, I think all of us spend all of our time on mobile. Uh, we see that impact in our slick deals traffic as well. The migration to mobile is very quick. And even folks like you see it in the marketplace like Groupon and, and Facebook, et cetera, People saying users are, you know, 50 to 75 percent of their traffic is on mobile. Um, I really think it's those two two trends that will dictate uh, the winners and losers. And so we're trying to incorporate it as much as we can uh, in our offering. I mean, even though Slick Deals is a community, there's still a lot we can do in terms of adding more social features 
For example, it's not, you can't really, you can follow someone today, but it's not very prevalent and prominent on our site. But we want to be able to enable that sort of social interaction. A lot of it today is in the um, comments of the threads where people can go back and forth. But if there's a way for them to more private message each other or follow each other, hey, my name's Jane, that's Sally, she has similar interests, she loves like, you know, high-end shoes, I want to follow her and see what kind of deals she's, she's looking at so that, um, you know, when they hit the site, I'll, I'll see those deals as well. So that, those types of things that we're, where we're not doing a good job, we're trying to do better. That's a great question. Do you have any thoughts in terms of the future? Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out if the space is going to consolidate into a layer. Within the deals coupon space, I think there will be consolidation. And I think, uh, generally speaking, in a lot of verticals, there will be consolidation and there's always a flight to quality. And you already see this happening in the deals coupon space. You have like retail me not, coupons.com public. And these are large behemoths that will probably now, with the public currency, start acquiring folks. Coupons.com just announced they acquired. Uh, Ecom, which operates DefinitiveDeals.com. Um, so I think there will be consolidation. I think advertisers will as well when they look at the affiliate population. Uh, I see a trend towards them narrowing their affiliate programs. Um, so yeah, I think there definitely will be consolidation in the space. Well, number one, we don't sell anything. We don't carry inventory. So in some sense, uh, I like that because we're just a social layer on top of everyone else. Uh, so whether it's a you know, Groupon, Amazon, eBay, or whatever retailer out there, uh, we're agnostic to it. Anyone can post those deals to our site and see, have that 360 degree view. Uh, whereas, you know, maybe some other e-commerce site can't ha provide that breadth of content. So I think uh, time is up, but I'll be around for the next 30 minutes to an hour if you had any questions. And here's my contact information if you want to reach out to me on LinkedIn, which behind Slick Deals is my second favorite site in the world. So feel free to reach out to me, and um, thanks for your time.